Hello, my name is Jan Thielemann and in this video I want to talk about Event Handler. In another video I showed you how you can create model validators and Event Handlers are basically the same as model validators but they use a slightly different architecture approach and therefore you have to create them a little bit different. To create an event handler, you first have to create a plugin project. And since I don't want this plugin uh, to be stored in the item Pierre repository, I uncheck this checkbox here. Create a new directory somewhere else. Now I use this name as the project's name. I use the OSGI framework Equinox and since it can happen that the client uh, uses an older Java version, I change the execution environment to Java 6. Here you have to provide an ID for this plugin, which has to be unique, and the name. After you created the plugin, the manifest opens, and here is a good idea to add the base plugin as the dependency and the plugin utils. And save this. Now I create a new package. And a new class in this package. I call it my event handler. And not like in a model validator where you implement an interface, uh, when you use event handlers, you have to extend a class called abstract event handler and implement these two methods. <coughs> now you see that you got an error here because, um, yeah, this is the wrong uh, class Eclipse tries to import and so you have to add either uh, either you have to add the um, org eclipse osgi services bundle or you import the package org eclipse osgi event so um, I noticed that when I tried to build plugins with Jenkins Continuous Integration Server and I imported the uh, package here, I got um, errors when uh, Jenkins tried to resolve dependencies. So I think it's better to add the org eclipse OSGI services um, bundle to the required plugin section. Save this organize my imports and here I want the OSGI service event. Save it. Now I have a class which can handle events but the framework does not know about this class. So now I have to create a component definition. To do this I go to the plugin development section and create a new component de definition. This name has to be uh, unique in my um, plugin. And here I have to provide a unique name which is unique um, through the whole application. So what I like to do is I use the um, plugin name followed by um, event handler. Then I have to select my class, my event handler, and add a property called service ranking, which is an integer. Give it a value like 100. And what this does is when the OSGI framework asks all the bundles uh, if they provide a certain service. Uh, you get a list which is ordered by the service ranking property. And sometimes Idempierre provides default services 
and if they are in the list but they are before your own plugin it can happen that uh, your own plugins uh, service is never called so always um, provide this service ranking property then you go to the services tab and add a new service to the referenced service section which is called i event manager like this one <coughs> then you have to um, edit it and um, add this um, string here in the bind field. So let me quickly check if I um, did this correct. Oh, I made a mistake. It's bind event manager. Yes, now it should work. Then you have to make sure that in your manifest the newly created component definition is entered and here you have the service component key um, followed by the component definition. Normally Eclipse should create this for you. Then go back to your event handler and here you have two uh, methods. In the initialize method you have to register for all the events you want to um, uh, get notified of and here you handle this event. To do this you um, register an event and a table name <coughs> or an uh, event for a given table name. The um, events you can register for are stored in this class right here. And as you can see, we have uh, nearly the same events as our model validators could provide. We have um, events for the um, models. The, uh, these events start with PO, which stands for persistent object. And we have events for documents, so we can register an event handler for uh, document changes and also we have the after login event for example so now i want to register for the uh, after change event on the m order table and i would like this now if i create a new order uh, my event handler won't get notified because the after change event only happens when you change the model. So uh, I also want to get notified when I newly create a model. And then I have to register the after new event. In the do event hand, uh, do handle event method, I then can handle the event and uh, the abstract event handler provides some methods uh, which I can use and one uh, important method is the getPO method because this lets me get the um, persistent object of the event. So what I can do is getPO event And what I um, like to do, because normally I don't only um, register for one table name, but for um, more than one table, then I first do a check if the PO is an instance of my order class. And if it is the case, then I can cast this um, PO. So I can access the getter and setters. So uh, now I want to log something and logging an item pair works with a C logger. Now I can 
can log on uh, different levels. For example, um, yeah, errors um, should be logged with um, with this level. Then we have a level for warnings, a level for informations or for configurations, and we have fine, finer, and finest. And you can um, yeah configure the application so that uh, only a certain level of logs uh, is shown on the console. My application is set to only show warnings and server uh, lockings, so I use um, the warning to lock something. And what I uh, want to lock is the orders document number. can do it like this. What I uh, else can do is to check um, which event topic uh, the event comes from. And to do this I can um, get the topic name and check if it's equal to this topic, for example. But let's just print the topic to our log. Like this. Okay. Now I can start the server application, but before you start the server, make sure your uh, event uh, plugin is started. And activate it. still have a model validator from another video in it, so um, I will quickly remove it and see you in a second. So I quickly removed the uh, old model validator and now I should be able to log in. Now when I uh, open the sales order and do some changes and save it, you can see that uh, my event handler gets called with the after change event. And the same goes for the new event. So I have to enter some data so that I'm able to uh, save my changes. And now when I save, you see the event handler gets called with a new event. <coughs> But what can I use event handlers or model validators for? Um, yeah, normally you use them to validate your model. You can, for example, um, register for the before new or before change event and make sure that uh, all necessary fields, uh, fields are filled. You can uh, create other entries based on your uh, on the data you entered. And a good example could be if you um, create a new sales order and you have a default product which you sell every time you create a new sales order then why should the user enter this product by himself just create an event handler or a model validator and then you can uh, create the order line for the product in the code for example uh, you can um, yeah, create a new order line like this. 
but this is just an example and I think when it comes to the place that you need to create something um, yeah, or validate something you will know what you have to do but now you have seen how you can create an event handler and how to use it so I hope this video helps you and I see you in the next video